Hello everybody and welcome back to Southern Fried Crime, the true crime channel with a country twist. If you're new here, please like, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon to be notified when new videos post. New videos post on Mondays. I may post more, but it just depends on how much time I have because I do have to work. And speaking of Mondays, on the October the 19th, I will not be posting a video that day because I am trying to prepare a week worth of videos to post on Halloween of different uh, crimes that happened on Halloween and just different spooky stories. So, I um, apologize for the 19th, but I am trying to get a special uh, Halloween special going for you guys. So, thank you for that. Now, in today's case, I'm going to be discussing the murder of a young woman named Kara Evelyn Knott at the hands of a California Highway Patrol officer, Craig Pyre. This isn't a video bashing cops, though. This is about a cop who used his badge to flirt with women, and one night he just took it too far, and it ended with the murder of Kara Knott. So sit back, get yourself a little something to eat and drink, while I'll tell you about the murder of Kara Knott at the hands of a CHP officer, Craig Pyre. Kara Evelyn Knott was born February the 11th, 1966, to Sam and Joyce Knott. Kara was known as a vivacious, bubbly young woman and she was a stereotypical Southern California girl, blonde hair, beautiful eyes, and a beaming smile. She was a very responsible girl. If Kara said she was going to be somewhere, she could be counted on to be there. Kara would be where she said she was going to be at the time she said she was going to be there. Two days after Kara's murder, a local television station, KCST-TV, was covering the murder. A news reporter was doing a ride-along with a CHP officer named Craig Pyre. Pyre was talking about self-protection and safety for women who were alone on the road. Craig Pyre was known as a cop's cop and had a well-known and sparkling reputation within the department. But was Craig Pyre all that he seemed? To the women who called the police department after the segment, they would paint a different picture of Officer Pyre. At the time, Pyre was known as a 38-year-old super cop. But to the over 20 women who called the station, he was somebody who was much different. The callers all stated the same basic story. Pyre would pull them over in the same general area where Kara had been found. He was not described as being violent, but Pyre would <coughs> excuse me. Pyre would often detain them for insane amounts of time, sometimes for up to an hour. He would ask them questions about their personal lives and ask them out on dates and would stroke their hair and shoulders. It was also discovered that not only had a mother contacted authorities a month before Kara's murder to complain about Pyre pulling her daughter over on the Mercy Road exit off I-15 for no reason, but also pointed out Pyre had visible scratches on his face during the KCST TV segment. The image put forth by Craig Pyre began to drastically change. At first, he was seen as a loyal 13-year veteran of the California Highway Patrol. Instead of his sterling reputation, it became known that he had a reputation for following young female drivers and pulling them over on the pretext of a citation or a ticket. He would awful he would then become overly friendly and sexual with them. One of Pyre's two ex wives said that Pyre you Pyre became Mr. Macho after joining CHP and used his badge to flirt with women. I don't know about you guys, but this man sounds like a real winner to me. Seriously though, what a piece of shit. Using his badge to entice and assault women. 
I used to pull over anywhere because I had that much faith in law enforcement. But after I learned about the case of Karen Knott, I started to become more careful about the way I pull over whenever I'm getting pulled over by a police officer. Now I will only pull over in a well-lit area as well as I try to pull over where there are plenty of people, i.e. witnesses around. Two days after Kara's murder, a local television station, KCST TV, was covering the murder. A news reporter was doing a ride along with a CHP officer named Craig Pyre. Pyre was talking about self protection and safety for women who were alone on the road. Craig Pyre was known as a cop's cop and had a well known and sparkling reputation within the department. But was Craig Pyre all that he seemed? To the women who called the police department after the segment, they would paint a different picture of Officer Pyre. At the time, Pyre was known as a 38-year-old super cop. But to the over 20 women who called the station, he was somebody who was much different. The callers all stated the same basic story. Pyre would pull them over in the same general area where Kara had been found. He was not described as being violent, but Pyre would <coughs> excuse me. Pyre would often detain them for insane amounts of time, sometimes for up to an hour. He would ask them questions about their personal lives and ask them out on dates and would stroke their hair and shoulders. It was also discovered that not only had a mother contacted authorities a month before Kara's murder to complain about Pyre pulling her daughter over on the Mercy Road exit off I-15 for no reason, but also pointed out Pyre had visible scratches on his face during the KCST TV segment. The image put forth by Craig Pyre began to drastically change. At first, he was seen as a loyal 13-year veteran of the California Highway Patrol. Instead of his sterling reputation, it became known that he had a reputation for following young female drivers and pulling them over on the pretext of a citation or a ticket. He would awful he would then become overly friendly and sexual with them. One of Pyre's two ex wives said that Pyre you Pyre became Mr. Macho after joining CHP and used his badge to flirt with women. I don't know about you guys, but this man sounds like a real winner to me. Seriously though, what a piece of shit. Using his badge to entice and assault women. I used to pull over anywhere because I had that much faith in law enforcement. But after I learned about the case of Karen Ott, I started to become more careful about the way I pull over whenever I'm getting pulled over by a police officer. Now I will only pull over in a well lit area as well as I try to pull over where there are plenty of people, i.e. witnesses around. Another witness said he saw a patrol car accompanying a Volkswagen Beetle which was thought to be the one Karen Ott was driving in the exact area at about the time the murder was known to have occurred. Knott was last seen alive at a Chevron gas station just two miles away from the murder scene. The attendant remembered seeing a marked CHP patrol car making a U-turn on the road just after Knott had driven away. Pyre's own logbook revealed a hastily falsification about that time as well as changes he had made to several written traffic tickets which had been written about the same time according to the motorists to whom the tickets were written. A forensic dentist named Norman Sperber examined the rope found in, his, in the patrol car and he determined that they seemed to match the rope marks around the victim's neck although Sperber was later barred and test about testifying about his findings in court. A distinctive and unusual gold rayon fiber found to have been made using a yellow pigment instead of a dye which was found on Nod's dress matched a shoulder patch Pyre wore on his CHP uniform. 
Tire tracks at the bridge showed a car had pulled hastily away for the pavement, leaving black marks. Furthermore, a drop of blood was found on one of Knott's boots, which was found to be consistent with Pyre's blood, which was AB negative, which is the rarest blood type, and other genetic markers. Although conclusive DNA testing was not available at the time of the investigation. Microscopic purple fibers also linked Pyre to Knott's murder. Pyre's fellow officers testified to the defendant's strange actions following the murder with his continuous request regarding the investigation status and his attempts to justify the perpetrator's crime as a mistake. An internal investigation showed that while he stopped many drivers for various legitimate violations, most of them were females who were driving alone. Additionally, they were of the same age group and physical description as Karen Knott. The first trial for Craig Pryor resulted in a hung jury. Upon retrial, testimony regarding a potential second suspect and a hearsay explanation for the defendant's scratches was ruled inadmissible and Pryor was found guilty of murder. The first conviction of a murder by an on-duty CHP officer. On August the 4th, 1988, Craig Pryor was sentenced to 25 years to life. After conviction, Pryor continued to claim his innocence. In 2004, he was asked if he would contribute a sample of his DNA to a San Diego County program which had been designed and initiated to use DNA samples to possibly exonerate wrongfully imprisoned persons because such testing was not yet available at the time of his trial and conviction. However, Pyre refused to provide any DNA for the test. At an additional hearing in 2004, after having served 17 years, when asked why he wouldn't provide a DNA sample, Pyre refused to answer. The board denied his parole on the grounds of his lack of remorse for the crime, as well as for his refusal to explain why, why he was saying he was innocent, yet would not let anybody to help him prove it. That's all for today's case. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more true crime content. Bye-bye for now.